Hello, today I'm going to present to you module three, which is on transeptal access fundamentals. Here are my disclosures. So today's objective on this module is to learn the basics of transeptal access for transcaptal mitral valve intervention procedures. Also to understand the echo and floor imaging involved in performing safe and successful transeptal access. So optimal transeptal puncture is the key first step of a mitral clip procedure or even transcaptal mitral valve replacement procedures. The transeptal puncture is TEE and floor guided in terms of to make sure you have optimal position, you need to recognize the landmarks and early detection of complications. So the key parts of a transcaptal edge to edge repair or tier procedure is you need to have the detailed pre-case planning on the mitral topology, number of clips being used, clipping location and order, and then the transeptal puncture. You want to steer the clip to the mitral valve, leaflet grasping, and understanding of TEE and floral. So the working length of the mitral clip NTL or XTL system, uh, and now you, of course you have mitral clip G4, is that you have the tip of the guy and then you have the steerable sheave and delivery shaft, and you need to be a working length of roughly five to five and a half centimeters to the clip. So the factors determining the optimal puncture for mitral clip is the working length of the mitral clip G4 system, as I mentioned, the type of pathology involved such as degenerative MR, where you co-optation leaflet relative to the analyst, or functional MR, where you have the lower leaflet co-optation plane and the size of the left atrium. In the case of non-central MR, it really depends whether it's a medial jet or the lateral jet or the central jet. If it's a medial jet, you have a higher transeptal height needed. You can see that because your deflection necessary to get to the medial part of the valve. If you have a lateral jet, you can have a little bit lower transeptal height. But of course, now with advanced steering, you can certainly have the optimal transeptal height and then adjust your catheter steering that way. This is a very important review paper back in 2016 on transeptal techniques of emerging structural heart intervention. I encourage you to all to read it and download it. There are a number of catheters for transeptal access as structural needle. There's some that are non-steerable, such as in the panel A, and then there are those two who are steerable, such as the bottom part. And then the letter C represent different pre-curved needle. There's also the safe set wire for mechanical puncture. And of course, now using radio frequency energy, you have the Bayless radio frequency needle. So there are a number of basic transeptal access views on TEE. So the first one is the bicable view where you look at the SBC on the right side of the screen, the IBC in the bottom left, on the left side of the screen, and you want to be able to see the tenting on the atrial septum here. And then you have the aortic valve short access view where you have the aortic valve here and aorta, and you have the left atrium there, so you want to see the tenting between the right atrium and left atrium on the top left of the screen that is as posterior as possible. And then the four chamber view is showing the measurement, the height from the interatrial septum punct tenting area to the mitral analyst or the leaflet to be able to determine whether you have sufficient height or not. From an imaging standpoint, this is how anatomy works. So as you go in the SBC area, when you have your transeptal sheath and system, you're essentially going more towards the anterior aspect of the mitral valve. So if you're too superior, meaning too close to the SBC, you're gonna be more likely having an anterior puncture, which may impede you from steering optimally to the mitral valve. If you have more posterior or more inferior puncture, you could be more goes to more coaxial deployment. And this is a typical area you would aim for in transcaptal mitral valve and valve replacement, for example. Uh, and in terms of mitral clip typically or tear, you would typically go on the more mid fossa to optimally uh, go posterior to the, what we call intercommissural line, as you've seen here. Now, in terms of the height, as I mentioned before, the height you need to go more posterior with the device. So for example, here, this is the transeptal needle, and you want to see, you want to gain height, you actually have to clock the device, and then if you want to lose height, then you counter clock the device because the device is pre-curved. Here is the example of how it works. You can see this is a fluoroscopic anatomy. And you can see that in terms of overlay I show here on the RAO view, on the LAO view. The LAO view show you whether you're going towards the septum 
uh, on towards the left atrium, you can see there's an M plus a closer device to give you a, a reference point of the uh, interatrial septum and the two mitral clips here. And of course, on the RAO, you can see how far you are away from the mitral annulus. And often you can, may have landmarks such as uh, mitral annular calcification or circumflex stance that show you that's the AB group. And so you're able to appreciate the distance on the RAO more so in terms of how posterior you are and how much height you have relative to the mitral annulus. So here is your example of mitral clip steering on the RAO view. You can see that this is a typical projection and the LAO view, you can see that here going more towards on force towards you. And you can see the overlay here to ex explain to you this is more lateral, this is more medial deflection. And you can see that here, posterior anterior. And you can see that here as well, anterior posterior on LAO view, lateral medial. So lateral will be upper left, upper right of the screen. So this is a transeptal puncture. You have the transeptal sheep and the SVC. You can see that here with a 032 uh, floppy wire. And then you advance the needle. Don't exit the needle tip outside the sheep because you might uh, risk injury. And this will provide more support to the sheep. And of course, then you come down to the, to the fossa and you can see the drop here. And that's how you know you let it in the interatrial septum. And when you do that, you can see that here, we typically do the bi uh, sorry, bi cable view, explain to the uh, almost a reverse uh, aortic valve axis. You usually see that tenting here on the mid septum, and you see that here with posterior part of the septum. And then on the four chamber view, you see this tenting here, then you can measure relative to the mitral annulus in a perpendicular manner. So you have to make sure you measure perpendicular manner rather than oblique, because obviously you'll be over estimating uh, the actual height of the transeptal height. So if you need more height, you have to go back to the short axis view and clockwise rotate the needle in the system that will be able to rotate the catheter more posteriorly away from the mitral valve and aortic valve to gain height. And the opposite is true. If you need to lose height, you have to counterclock the needle in the system to reduce the height and you have to go back to the four chamber view and we measure the height again. So once you confirm done that, you confirm a two place in throw and look for landmarks as your guys, such as MAC or mitral analytic classification or circumflex stand. You can see that superior, inferior, posterior, and anterior on an LAO projection. This is the left atrial appendix. You can see where the safe supply has gone. And you can see that on the LAO view is to the left side of the spine. On the RAO view, the catheter should be the right side of the spine as landmarks. And you can see that here, for example, where the MAC is. Now, rotating the sheave and the side arm and the needle, you have to do it together to maintain the directionality. Remember, all these devices are pre curved, so you have to pre curve sheave, pre curve dilator, and pre curve needle. So you can see they all have to line up. So the directionality of the sheave and the dilator should be the same as the flush port of the sheave and the uh, arrow pointing of the needle. And you want to move the whole system in tandem in one, whether it's overhand or underhand. It's up to you, but you have to make sure they don't shift so that you can, you have inadvertently have the needle exiting the catheter. So you can see that here, you need to maintain at least only one to two finger breath between that and the needle. And when you advance the needle, you'll see how the needle exited the dilator. So you certainly don't want to do that until you're ready to puncture. So this is advanced safe set wire to the LA. This is a mechanical puncture, very fine needle a traumatic, you can see that you can do that mechanically. And of course, you can also do that with the radio frequency, Bayless needle. And once you puncture, you definitely want to do an X-plane of the aortic valve short axis to confirm that you're in the mid septum. You can see the trajectory of the wire across to the left atrium. So again, the advancing the needle and the sheet are together on the same floor projection. You can see that here, where's the triceptal puncture? site initially to see the landmark, I dry CNA this so that you have a reference and then you can advance the sheep knowing that you're in the well in the left atrium. So you can see for the mitral valve in valve, uh, you would definitely not anterior. You wanna avoid anterior puncture because you have a tough time railing. You, what you wanna do is just go more posterior as I've shown here. And that's what you wanna do, inferior, mid and posterior. Instead of four and a half or four to four and a half centimeter high for mitral clip, you don't need to be that uh, high actually, or posterior. You can go two and a half 
to force them into a loud railing. You don't want to be too low, however, so that for the safety and free valve, you won't want to run out of room to be able to position the valve. So here's how you look like. So optimal wire trajectory involves like this, inferior posterior puncture. You can see the balloon wasting here. That's where the septum was. And you're going to see that tracking nicely in a, in a smooth manner rather than a buck buckling the catheter. Now, is CT helpful? Well, typically you don't use CT to guide transeptal access, but sometimes you can use it in fusion imaging, but also you can see if there's any kind of tortuous uh, I IVC, tortuous spine, patient scoliosis, it might be able to help you predict the transeptal trajectory, RAL, AP, and LAO view. And you'll also be able to help identify any IVC filter or abnormal IVC. So steps of the safe transeptal puncture position the BRK1 needle, two centimeter from the tip of the SL1 guy, if you're using mechanical puncture, you position a safe jet wire one centimeter from the tip of the SL1 guy where the wire tip is not really opaque. Keep that in mind. You want to attempt to advance the safe set wire across the septum in LA. If it's not able to do that, advance the needle slowly to puncture the septum, then advance the safe set wire. And of course, you want to confirm the wire in the left atrium on TE and check floral trajectory before advancing the needle into the LA. If you look in the Bayless system, the radio frequency system, you position a Bayless needle a few millimeters from the tip of the guy. Once position is confirmed uh, and the needle is out, you activate the RF energy. You want to confirm some air bubble. This is not real air bubbles. It's just a little bit of uh, turbulence seen in the LA on the TED, and then you confirm and check left atrial pressure before you advance the needle and the dilator uh, into the LA on the TED and fluoroscopic guidance. So in summary, proper transeptal techniques the most critical step of transeptal mitral procedure. You want to use echo and flow guidance. You want to puncture location, depends on the MR pathology, the size of the left atrium, whether it's central or non-central jet, and also the device you're using. And you want to be vigilant about potential complications. So if you want to learn this on your own, there's a transeptal app that my colleague, Dr. Anna Punakini and I developed with Mount Sinai. The number of different anatomy, basics, two box techniques, and challenging scenario you can uh, view and download. You can see that here. It's highly usable. You can download it to your app uh, or your Android or Apple platform. So I encourage you to do that to learn the basics and fundamentals that we develop for our educational initiative that we do for our fellows and others. And with that, I'd like to thank you very much for your attention.